Right, so um, well, does anyone believe they're supposed to be in a different room to the room talking about Overleaf and later? You're closing your laptop, does that mean you're leaving? No, no, no. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Cool, there's cool. uh, a plug behind actually if you needed it there. Um, so my name is uh, Vince and I'm a, a lecturer here at the School of Mathematics and I, I feel because of what I'm about to say, the, the need to preempt what I'm going to say by saying I, I don't work for Overleaf, so I, I'm not paid for this. Um, so everything you're getting is, is like my real opinion of it, even though John's staring me down right now. Um, <laughs> uh, so, um, and that, that leads me to what I'm about to say, which is I'm, I'm a huge Overleaf fan. Um, as, a, as a lecturer here, I get to uh, teach uh, LaTeX to our, our first year uh, mathematicians. And um, that's fun. And uh, came with a huge challenge when I started teaching it was that installing LaTeX is hard. Um, it, it can be very hard. Uh, one of my first videos I've ever put up on YouTube is a video of me installing LaTeX on uh, OS X, uh, just to try and get my students able to, to, to do it. And then I thought, well, we're getting to these, um, these cloud systems that can do these things. And I remembered back when I started my PhD looking if there was a cloud system, you know, when, just when Google Docs kind of existed, I was like, is there, is there a similar cloud system? And there was something, but it didn't really work very well. And so I, you know, I tried again when I started teaching it, and I found Overleaf. And, and Overleaf is, well, just made my life incredibly easier from the point of view of teaching, because I just teach students how to use LaTeX. I don't have to worry about them being able to install something, files breaking, not pointing at the right thing. I just teach them uh, LaTeX. And um, I've tried qu quite a few other cloud-based systems, and, and I actually used to have YouTube videos for all different systems to kind of come across as unbiased. <coughs> Students can use whatever they want. Um, and I've stopped that now. I, I just recommend Overleaf because I was spending so much time fixing things that would break on other systems. So it is incredibly uh, robust. Um, people at, at Overleaf have built a, a wonderful tool. Um, so in this workshop slash demo, which is probably the, the correct thing for it to be called, um, I'm, I'm going to talk about it uh, a little bit. By the way, we, um, Overleaf are, are giving out a year free of their pro account. Um, so if you, if you haven't already, um, I would go to that uh, URL there and um, sign up and, 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 and then you can, can use the, the pro account. Um, if, um, if you go to Overleaf, You see a website like, like so, um, and what's interesting is you don't see, uh, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, John, um, apart from the, the, the merger with share LaTeX, you don't, you don't really see the word LaTeX anywhere, right? And if you, you look at that, you, you don't actually even see any, any LaTeX code in there. And what you have here is what's called the rich tech editor, and I'm gonna speak about that in a little bit. And I remember when uh, Overleaf brought that out, and John, you talked about this a bit in your, in your keynote, how you, you guys really did speak with your user base and stuff. And you might not remember, but I remember when you brought out your rich text editor, you and I had a conversation about it. And I was actually like, no, I, I can't believe you brought this out. I'm someone who uses this for teaching LaTeX. My students are not gonna need to learn to use LaTeX because they can just use this rich text editor where there is no LaTeX code. I was like, oh no, I'm gonna have to find something else. Um, and you and I went back and forth about it, and not because of John, uh, not saying you weren't uh, charismatic in your response, but not because of John, but my opinion about this rich text editor has completely changed, and I will walk you through why that is. So before I carry on, just so I get a, an idea of people in the room, how many people know how to write LaTeX? How many people are comfortable if I said we're going to write a latex document? How many people would like to look a little in? Okay. So um, for those of you who would like to work along what we're doing or perhaps learn a little bit more about latex itself, this is a set of notes by, by Geraint. Oh, Geraint's here, by the way. He's, he's, he's helping out. Uh, it's a very good set of notes. It's called the refresher session. It's one of the comments I've made to you that you should 
Uh, you told me I made this comment, I forgot. You should rename this to just be introduction to LaTeX or something. And it's a very nice set of notes just walking through doing, doing LaTeX. So we're, we're going to kind of write some LaTeX at the same time. So anyway, if you're, if you're following along, hopefully you've gone to Overleaf. Uh, potentially you've created an account, uh, potentially picked up the, the free pro account. And um, I'm going to click on, on my projects. You can see, I'm not lying, I do use this. Um, Monty Hall problem and the effect of goats. This is a paper that Nicoletta um, has been writing and, and stuff like that. And um, I'm just going to click on, on new project here. I'm going to click on new project. Lots of things come up. So talking about specific uh, ways to write for an academic journal, specific other things. I'm going to click a, a blank paper. And what comes up is, is a LaTeX editor on your left, okay? And the rendered version of your document here. So from a teaching point of view, this is absolutely fantastic because in about three minutes, students can start learning LaTeX as opposed to three minutes to go to the correct site to decide if they're going to install MacTech or Tech Live and then start installing it before they get anywhere. So this just gets you straight here. Um, and then, and then we can start. So um, I'm, I'm going to say uh, title, um, some thoughts about Colab W 2018. I'm going to say that the date is today. And again, if, if you're not too familiar with uh, LaTeX, for, forgive me, but essentially the way it works is I write code on the left and it's going to render this on um, the right, I say make title to make the title that I just made. And um, this is a demo session on using over on writing, writing later with overleaf. And then if we wait a little bit while that renders, That's come up, and so this would be a fancy paper that we're starting to write. And um, I can do other things. So if I um, if I go to the uh, oops, C O O, please don't be something terrible. Please don't be something terrible. Um, if I go here and I, I grab this photo, for example, I'm just going to download that photo to my uh, computer and I'm gonna write um, collab W18 and I can just like um, you'd expect I can say I want to add a file so I'm gonna go to files upload from my computer you can see there's stuff that I can go directly to my Dropbox account or, or things like that And um, let me include that picture. And you can see already that the overly LaTeX editor is actually quite nice, right? It was giving me those suggestions, so it's got all the things you expect from an IDE. Which again, from a teaching point of view, is is really good because it allows me to it allows my students to get little hints as they're writing code. Because more than whether or not my students know the exact syntax for a word, I'm interested in whether they know what they're doing. So once that's, we'll leave that load up. We'll have a pic a picture in there. Um, I when I usually use this, I actually set the previewer to be on manual just so that I'm never confused as to when my code uh, might have entered an error, but. Um, I know it's very popular to have all these things at the same time. And then um, what you can do, oh, compile error, there we go. Oh, I forgot the dot. Yeah, and so, um, actually, I should have left it and used the, all of the help on this, but you might have seen that tech editor over here actually highlighted that in red. Late tech editors are understandably not always the easiest things to, 
to, to find, but we get the idea. And so then moving on, um, what we can do is we can click on share, right? And this is where, so okay, so Vince has shown us this nice late deck editor. That's essentially all I've done, right? But if someone were able to package and squish something um, in, that always works, takes a couple of minutes to download, who cares? This is where stuff begins to get interesting. So we can see the read and edit link, the read only link, and something else that'll come to on a bit into a onto in a bit. So if I click on this read and edit link, and I grab that, and I'm just gonna drop that into my conversation with with Garen. You can see Garen and I talking about our double act this morning where we didn't quite go to script because of me. Um, and now now Garen's got a link. Hopefully. <laughs> and then Garen can start writing something. Hopefully. <laughs> so he just typed that and now it says this is Garen. Okay? And so that's that's fantastic. That's you know really, really useful when it comes to collaborating. And now this is where what I was talking about about my relationship with a rich text editor comes in. Because from a student's point of view, this is fantastic. They can use LaTeX and it's great. But LaTeX also has this rich text editor. So um, someone can write stuff here without needing to know how to use uh, LaTeX, without seeing more than, than they, <coughs> they need to. So, so this is kind of hidden away, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and so this is one of the places where Overleaf is a fantastic collaborations tool because you can be working with someone who doesn't know LaTeX. But the important thing is they don't need to, right? You can, you can just pass them this. And perhaps if you're writing the equations, um, so I'll say, this is Geraint, and I'll say, because Geraint's still got the rich text mode. This is Geraint. Geraint, can you add those equations you did here, please? So it's nice. It's got a nice commenting feature in the rich text editor. And so then I'll go here and I'll, I will keep writing about the study as a subject matter expert in the problem about the thing. Um, and so then all of a sudden, Gar write some equations, Garen. <laughs> <laughs> um, so one of the main use cases of, of LaTeX is often seen as something for writing equations because you can do that. Okay, so Garen should do something there and me, as a uh, someone who's never used LaTeX before, I don't even know need to know that. But I can still collaborate with him using my own machine. Um, and so this actually is something I have used. I have used this. And it was it was years after our conversation, John. And, and, and all of a sudden, I was like, "This is what John meant." Um, that the real wonderful thing about LaTeX, about Overleaf, is that you can still use this piece of software, and you can still. Uh, benefit from all the wonders of, of LaTeX itself with people who don't need to know it. So I, I've had lots of people saying, oh yeah, but I do need to use Word or I do need to use this or I do need to use that because sometimes I collaborate with people who don't know LaTeX. That doesn't, that's not a good reason anymore. Um, you can still use the best tools for the job um, using this way and said you can benefit from all the other things that uh, Overleaf has to offer as well, such as being able to um, uh, directly publish from it. Um, so one of the other, uh, in case you're you're wondering to see what what that is, you can click on it. And you, it just shows you the the LaTeX code um, there. So one question that came up in uh, John's talk was, okay, but then I still have to use a web uh, editor. The, the OVD web editor is really nice. You can go into your settings, you can change it to using Vim key bindings and various other things, probably more than I, I know of and, and things like that. Um, but if you did want to use your own system, you can. So if you go back to the share button, we, there's this clone with Git. And so if I just go to my local system, uh, that's a good place, and I type git clone and that uh, git bridge URL. That all comes down. And now I've got that 
um, address there. And if I go in there, I've got the LaTeX code that I've just been typing, including the image. So if I look at, at main.tex, that's just what we've been typing up there. And if I look at the Git history, we see that Geraint updated on Overleaf, anonymous project created, so all those things just just happened, and it's a it's a Git repo, it's a it's a Git um, it's a Git repository. So if I if I go in there and I say um, this could be something a third editor would write, and so I'm using my editor, but anyone can use their own editor here. Anyone can use their own system. Um, so now if I look, there's some unstaged changes um, and I will just commit them, add a line that doesn't say much. And now if I push that, that's gone. And then if we go back to Overleaf, this is something that a third editor would write. Okay, and so that that's really where things get wonderful because you can you can start to work more or less however you want with Overleaf in the middle. Yep. Um, I'm sort of afraid to ask questions. Please, no, please, 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 please. I, I should have. Afraid of jumping ahead to what you're doing. Um, two things. One, if you're doing it in either on your machine, yep. Well, on your machine makes more sense. Can you sort of insert those comments anyway? Yeah, so by, if by copying it, and what happens when you push that back if Garen has made changes? Great questions. Great questions. So, if you look, uh, so now I'm in the LaTeX editor. Um, the comment I added through the RichTeX editor, yeah, is is a, is a wrapper around around LaTeX commenting. My understanding is that you're going to get something else at some point, but for the moment, that's that's that. Yeah. So, can I add comments? Yes, I can. So locally, normally what I would do when I'm uh, working with someone is I would add a, a comment directly in the LaTeX code saying uh, to do, we need to address this at some point, right? So, yep, you can definitely. I, I didn't know if to get it, if they're looking at it from the rich text, is there a minimum amount of that that you need in there for it to appear in the rich text? I don't know the answer to that question. Can you write the comments in LaTeX for it to appear in the rich text? Yeah, if you go right, I mean, so effectively we just, Yeah. Okay. Yeah, cool. I, I didn't know if you needed the yeah, whether it was sort of anonymous ones or whether you needed the timestamp in it. Either. That's good to know. Yeah. That's so basically, good. we just like the rich text mode works by passing the the latex ones and looking for things that it can identify. And so I identified that because it's got the sort of that star and then the the hat at the end. Yeah. Like okay. So your second question is essentially about what if Gary and I are both writing on that at the same time. Well, that line or just different same document. Yeah, okay, cool. So let's let's try same documents. Um Garrett, can you uh can you change the title using um on overleaf, on overleaf please, yeah. Um and what I will do is I will change this to the word I meant to say, which was author. Okay? So um now it doesn't really matter which one of us finishes first, right? Because both of, them, both of those scenarios are the same question, yeah? So I'm gonna go, I don't even know he's working on this, right? Um, and so I'm gonna go uh, fix uh, use of wrong. I'm guessing you're done, yeah? yeah. And so I'm gonna push that and I get exactly what I want to get. Right. Um, and what I want to get is, hey, some changes have gone over there. I don't want to get this, and it's got nothing to do with Overleaf right now, right? This is just Git saying, I don't want to create a mess. Yeah. Find out what happened over there, and then fix it. So, yeah, great. That's exactly the message you, you, you hope to get. And so I'm, I'm going to pull Geraint's changes down. They've come down. Yeah. Git has decided to do a merge. Uh, 
emerge commit. And there we go. And so uh, if I take a look at, at the history, I fixed the user word wrong of the wrong word. Geraint made that fix. And then my merge commit happened to squish those changes together. And then if I push, and now if we take a look, Geraint changed the words. Did you change it? Was that not what was there? I, I, I believe you. Yeah, great. And then also that says author. OK, so in other words, it, it's. I believe not doing anything too smart. The smart stuff is is yeah. Git. You just have access to a nice Git repo. Am I am I lying or taking no. any credit away from over? <laughs> and that's the right way, right? That's the way to, to do it. That you just just as if Gary and I were working on any other Git repository. Yeah. You know, if I'm changing stuff that he's changed, it says no, you can't can't do that. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then this allows you to do nice things. So. Um, if I, um, do I have a... Can I ask a question? Yeah, please, Gary. When, when um, all these just start git commit, is there any way to write a message? message? Not at the minute. No, we, we, yeah. Not yet. <laughs> oh, okay. It's one of the big words that we get used to. <laughs> so I'm, uh, I'm going to go ahead into my... Uh, we talked about Jupyter Network. I'm just going to write a quick line of code. Oh, I think we're running out of time, actually. I'm going to write a quick line of code in this um, repository. So um, and I'm going to say some Let me get uh, 50 rows of two columns of, of data. And let me put that into a, if you don't know Python, don't worry. This isn't the, the point. The point is I've got some code um, that's uh, doing something. Okay, so I've got some data, right? Done my experiment, analyzed my data, got some data. And I want to put that table into later. Um, and there are lots of clever things that are around, and what I'm about to do is nothing specific to, to pandas or Python. Most languages have something like this. If I look at this data frame that contains my data, it's got a to latex method, which just writes my latex for me, okay? And, um, what I'm slowly getting towards is the ability to make sure that my LaTeX and my code and my paper are reproducible. So that if if I were to change, uh, or run that again, because it's an unseeded random sample, what I'm about to do is make sure it's all fine. So this is just a string. This is just a, a, a LaTeX, um, a, a Python string. And so if I go with open and let me put src table dot tech so that's gonna die because I don't have a src if I do that what all I've done is in this src is now a file with that latex code that latex code that as I do my experiments could change and change and change and change and so, Hi. sorry, in five minutes, can you start moving back? Perfect. Thank you. Um, I could go, here is the data we analyzed. Is that the American spelling? Forgive me. Um, Pandas is actually using a nice way of displaying tables using a book tab. And LaTeX has a piece of, co a, a, a command called input. An input is fantastically useful. Um, essentially, it's one of my most used tools in, in LaTeX because anything that your code can output to a file, you can include it here. Because remember, all I can output is the LaTeX code to that table. And so I'm just getting it, sticking it right here.
actually I won't even compile it locally guarantee if I made a mistake it'll be your fault <laughs> so theoretically I could I could even upload my notebook here etc etc or you could go into how your git is configured and have git ignores for different things and things like that And there is the, the 50 lines of, of code, right? So just stepping away from Overleaf, that's just an extra kind of tip about best use of LaTeX itself and congestion with your things. If you're writing anything that's coming out of your software, don't. Get, get, get the software to do that too. Um, and to be honest, most of that can be done with, with input, all right? Um, that was very brief. We're supposed to tidy up now, but kind of the, the conclusion is I came to, um, I came to LaTeX to teach because it got over the, it's hard to install, can't click the correct button to install a thing. But this triangle here, I believe makes it an amazing research tool. And I'm not even talking about like further down the line of, of publishing and that one click publication thing that, that later has with so many publishers. I'm talking about the fact that this allows everyone to work to their strengths using tools that they're familiar with. Um, if you like, if you if you're not familiar to, with LaTeX and you need uh, something practically uh, uh, practically equal to uh, what you see is what you get editor, um, it has that. If you want a, a very nice editor that's just there for you, it has that. If you want to work in an environment that you're comfortable and familiar with, it has that. And and it kind of doesn't. No one of these users is a lesser citizen of the service, which is which is really cool. Any questions about anything? John, is there anything you want to add? I mean, we do have the song, so please, feel if you could com compliment anything I've said. No, I think, I do, if I'm just gonna, so this, this ties into another point earlier about, you know, how do you train, and how do you, how do you run workshops like this? So originally, the idea was that, like, I or John could come and give this, and one thing we've been trying to do, actually, because that's what, that's what we used to do, is we used to go on, this kind of talk, but A, that's just really unscalable. Um, I just literally, there are too many universities in the world to go and give this talk at. But it also, A, you know, I used Overleaf and I was a mathematician, not a computer scientist, and so I I don't tend to use the Gitbridge very much, and I, if I have my own perspective on it, and, and I now talk more about what I talked about earlier, and so like, I think one of the things we're trying to do is make it possible teachers and people who are using it um, within the classroom to be able to yeah like give these kind of talks and, and support that as well and so yeah I, I kind of was Vince is uh, an enthusiastic user who <laughs> created 21 videos in a weekend <laughs> I, was I was just going to bring those up actually but I really need to update them so this is my first year programming course and I've got a a chapter on on LaTeX and it is I mean I, I tell students about other services and I, uh, I I tell them about them but I, I say that I, I recommend Overleaf and then every single one of these I've got but you'll you'll see a travel in time actually if I click on one of these it was early <laughs> and this is what Overleaf used to look like it used to be called right LaTeX um, but the service still holds my, my, my students use this and are not confused by by that. So yeah. So uh, yeah, Geraint has a fantastic set of notes here on using LaTeX. Um, here are mine, um, and and they all link to 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 videos. And then the very quick question. Am I right in thinking that it this it doesn't support any suggest like top charge at the moment? Um so it does have an auto complete. No, I don't mean that sort of suggest. I mean like Oh sorry, suggested like editing. Um, no, but we're getting a nicer track changes kind of so you'll be able to turn on track changes okay. and have a more in line sort of track changes view. Oh, okay. Getting there. Okay. And and the other thing, and again I'm I'm not paid by Overleaf. I sometimes come across as a bit of a fanboy. Um <laughs> uh, I, and I had things I, I didn't like with it at the start. Um, you also have quite a nice blog and, a, and, and things like you're, you're putting in uh, you've written you've had some really nice blog pieces written about like the story and the history of LaTeX and it's 
specific things and technical things that are also also nice. So there's lots of resources around. Anything else that anyone would like to know? Thanks very much.